here this once and the soil moisture wasn't right, so we put drip lines on them, give them some more water with the hopes of dialing it in. It's a little bit better, but it's still not ideal. So we're gonna try one more trick to help improve that. The paper pot will still work, but in a finer tilt, it's gonna be better. We have another some other beds that we can kind of see the difference, but we're gonna do the, the seed bed roller, which is gonna contain a tamp and it's gonna break up some of these clods and make it a little smoother. Okay. What, what does that do then? I'm like, what, well, the, 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 these, what the fins it? here, they pull the dirt right. over the chain. And so sometimes if you're in really you like hairy soil, soil, like it's rocky and chunky, you can move the fins back, even take them off. And then like in really, really gnarly soil, like where it's like gravel, you just take the fins off and then you just, the paper pot digs down and lays the chain in and then you just go and cover it with a rake, okay. which is fast, it's faster than hand plants, <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely. for sure. So paper pot, we got the tray, we've got this little ramp. Hey, can I get in here and film this in front of you? Yeah, oh, go for it, yeah. We're gonna slide that under. <laughs> and then we use sod staples, same ones we use for irrigation, like drip lines and that. And we just throw, there's a couple here. Yeah. We just throw them in this little tray when we need them. You could also just, if you had another person, they could hold it there if you wanted to, or you a screwdriver, kind of whatever. And then we get it, so it's starting there. I'm starting on the edge of the bed. And then you, I don't know, you just get a sense for, your, depending on how many rows and where your, your wheels are for the next row and that. But for this first one, we just want to start as straight as possible. And then. So the first couple of feet will be kind of out of the ground. And that's, that's normal. Wow. Wow. Phew. <laughs> <Those> nervous girls. <laughs> <Seriously. laughs> Still, it's going a little deep. So what that, that wheel on the back there, that adjusts the depth. So when you bring it up, you make the plug less shallow. You're talking about where the handle is? That's right, where the handle is. I, I, I'm, I'm quite impressed on how Eric made the soil ready for that because I think what, what you guys did with the, uh, with the seed bed roller there brought the tension up. Because if the soil's too loose and it's chunky, it's a mess. So it seems like by firming it out, it makes this berry better. Because otherwise it's too loose. It, won't, it either won't backfill in well or you'll have chunks that'll disrupt the flow of the paper chains and then they'll rip. So it seems like this combination of the uh, arrow followed by that seed bed roller really helped. So we got this thing and I was really concerned about how, it, how our heavy soil would handle it and was blown away with almost no adjustment how well it did. That's because you guys have a really standard protocol with your bed prep. Yeah. That's what I've noticed. You, you're keeping good surface tension on your beds. Yeah. People that struggle with it usually have like some kind of heavy soil but their, their bed uh, prep isn't consistent and it's too loose on the surface. <laughs> now, when we first started using it, I mean, obviously we wanted to do this because it's a huge labor saver, but we started using it and every single person on the farm was just standing there, mesmerized, watching it all. <laughs> we can't keep doing this. This isn't. This is actually slowing us down. <laughs> but it's just amazing how it how it works and that. So if we have any issues, like sometimes it might leave it a little open on the sides and that. We get the three and a, I think it's the three and a half inch stirrupo, the glazer, and we put it on its end. So yep. it's. And we just drag it in between the rows and that just kind of furrows. You can even take the tine rake and yeah. go right oh, over. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. So yeah. anyway, that worked really, really slick. So, so uh, yeah. the, the fact that there's a drip, this big tube here yeah. makes it a little bit difficult. But usually what, what I do is I start right before the bed and I, I start dragging it in before the chain goes in the ground to make myself a furrow. So we can't really do that here, but you know, we're just gonna come down and just get it down as deep as we can. Yep. Get it set, right? Yep. Then I'll feed my chain through. Yeah, you can go plug it in for me. So you just put it through the last yep. tube here? Yep, just stick it right in there and then just stick it in the ground. Oh. Come, just come 
walk get it down. And, yeah, yeah perfect. Go. Thank you. So, a couple things. I'll just kind of get it going here. Um, if, like, I just carry these with me. I just carry a 10 mil and a crescent wrench with me. Um, just because I have like so much varying soil that I often have to tweak things on this and so major design flaw on the Japanese's part but whatever it's still a huge time, uh, time saving tool. It would be great if there was just quick couplers here and you could just loosen these with your hand mm. and then move the fins in and out. So these things I'm not going to adjust it because I don't want to screw up what Eric has because it's obviously working. But if you were in like really chunky soil and you were finding that you were consistently burying your chain or not getting it quite deep enough and you had already played with this, so the first thing you want to mess around with if it's not right is you want to come and adjust your height here, up or down. And so if you have done that and you had nowhere else to go and you're like, ah, oh, I just can't get this to work. And believe me, when I first started using this, I had like a half day of frustration in the same way. And so you've exhausted all possibilities there. There's two other things you can do. First thing is you adjust the fins either in and out. So you just loosen things up here and you move these fins in or out. So if that didn't work, what you can do, so say you're really, really rough soil, you can actually not use the wheel weights. And then that will actually, because what the wheel weights do is they kind of press it down at the end. And some soil is so rocky and chunky that they don't do you any good. So you can take the wheel weights off there. So this third thing I forgot. Third thing is if none of those worked, take the fins right off. Take the fins off and keep the wheels. And so like that's if you're in like the gnarliest soil possible. It's like really rocky, really hard, and you don't, you know, you've done all your best bed prep and it's not gonna go anywhere else. You take your fins off but keep the wheels on. And then when you pull it, You'll, you'll just create a really square trench and the, and the chain will go, uh, will go down that trench and you'll just have to like close it up. You can take a, a wire weeder or a, a tine weeder and walk it right over and it'll close it all up. So those are like your, your, your three things that are your last dish effort. But the first thing is, is just to adjust it here, up and down. That's mostly what you're going to play with is that. Um, but I think like the biggest takeaway that I've seen just from being here for the last four days and, and seeing what's involved in this farm is bed prep is the key. Just proper bed prep. And then once you once you figure out what that protocol is, then just sticking to that. And, and just seeing how they're using the harrow and stuff, that really makes a difference. Because some people who don't have, like, this isn't like jam your hand down into soil. There's, there's quite a bit of surface tension there. Um, it's not ideal and a lot of people think that if you don't have ideal soil you can't use this tool but it's not it's not true at all uh, uh, because and that and a lot of that comes from the fact that the Japanese guys like the the original people who used this tool were doing everything in just fluffy till beds and they go oh well, how would you, how else would this work otherwise but it's obviously not true it can, it can be used very well in non-tilled soil.